Good morning! Well, it's morning for me. About noon, so I guess lunchtime. How are you? If you're joining me live, thank you so much. I want to get started today with a question. So the question today is, what is one thing that you say over and over again to your students in your classroom? So again, the question is, what is one thing that you have to say over and over and over again to the students in your classroom? For me, uh, we have our backpacks hanging out in the hallway, and so they're not within sight. And so when it's when it um, is pickup time and time to go home, I have to say it a lot, like, go get your backpack, go get your backpack, where's your backpack, go find your backpack, because they, I think because they aren't the backpack's not right in view and so they're they just like can't focus on it but I have found a way to change that and I'm going to share that today with you but if you would if you're here drop a comment and let me know like what is one thing you have to say over and over again um you know with your students maybe it's don't run in the hall <laughs> maybe it's um trying to think of some other ones maybe it's to throw away your trash after lunch a lot of them forget to do those type of things um so today we're going to talk all about classroom procedures and I'm super excited about it because I just really have found something that works really good for me and it also saves like me my voice and how often I have to say things and in turn saves me a little bit of my sanity which is always important right oh good one walking feet please yes Corianne that's a great one um, hands to self <laughs> yeah yeah those are definitely preschool ones aren't they uh, tuck in your chair we don't have too much of that but yeah that's definitely when I taught first grade oh my goodness it's like pushing your chairs pushing your chairs I'm tripping yeah, these are all great like things that we just say constantly and it gets a little bit much, right? Um, so I'm going to hopefully help you see maybe how procedures could help you get some of that, get some help with that. Grant, are you still going to have to say it? Of course. But maybe there are some other ways to help your children get to that point independently. You need to wipe your nose. Isn't it amazing how they don't know they need to wipe their nose? One of our three-year-old teachers came up with a nose wiping station and it was amazing. Um, she had a mirror and everything. She taught them the steps. It was, it's pretty awesome because sometimes they come without knowing some of those skills. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So thank you for coming. Welcome to the Why You Should Be Teaching Classroom Procedures. And more importantly, we're going to get into how tomorrow, which is probably my favorite part. But I always like to start with the why, because I want to make sure whatever I'm putting my energy into and whatever I'm trying with my students has a reason behind it, a why. So let's take a moment right now. Oh, you may be able to hear my pups. They want to, they always went in on the lives and I never let them because they bark a lot. Um, let's take a moment and stop and think about all the routines that we have to teach our preschoolers. Now, for me, this list is like exhaustive. Like I can't even think of all of them off the top of my head, but here's some good ones, right? Coming over to the carpet, sitting at the carpet, lining up, walking in the hall, using the restroom, washing their hands, um, flushing the toilet, right? How to clean up after lunch, how to treat toys, how to clean up after we play. Oh my goodness, so many things. Yes, inside voices. This is how loud we can talk. That one seems to be um, one that they just don't grasp how loud they really are. But if you stop and think about how many things we teach our kiddos, like, whoo, it's exhausting, right? And honestly, it just makes me tired thinking about it. And I don't know about you, but every year at the beginning of the year, it's like, I am just dead because I have just taught these same things over and over again to kiddos who some of them have some of the knowledge of what to do in school and some of them just don't. So one thing I want to talk about that I know that I did personally um, for a couple of years until I really, really had to look inward and go, why are you assuming this? And that is committing a suicide. As adults, sometimes we just assume like, 
Well, they should know that, right? They should know how to do something as simple as hang up their coat, right? Or they should know how to flush the toilet. Like, didn't their parents teach them this? And sometimes we assume that they should know these things, but we don't know what's going on at home. We don't know what their family's background is, what their family's culture is, where they're living, who they're living with. Sometimes we know bits and pieces, but we don't always know the whole story. And so we assume, right? Why can't kids these days do this, this, and this? When I was a kid, this, this, and this, right? And so we're just constantly assuming like they should already know this. So now I'm frustrated with them because they don't know it. And now I am not seeing the behaviors I want and I may be doling out punishments, right? That's sometimes how it goes. But the reality is young children just have not been on this earth that long, right? They, they haven't learned all the things and our society's a little bit different now. And so we have to take all of that into account and realize that we have to teach them, right? So like if you had a child in your classroom that could not recognize their colors, you would not punish them for that skill deficit. You would teach them the colors. And so that's kind of where this idea of teaching them comes in. You're teaching them every aspect of everything and trying not to commit a suicide, right? One of my best favorite college professors always told us, and and it was in a lab school, so we actually got to try it out. And she was always telling us, Tell them what you want them to do. Tell them what you want to see. Because most of the time, they're wanting to meet your expectations. They just may not know what those expectations are because expectations change with every environment, every adult, you know, lots of things go into our expectations. Sometimes we don't even know what our expectations are and we have to figure it out before we can expect them to. So she would have us go through, like, what do you want them to do in the hallway? And so that's what we did, right? So before we left the hallway, we talked about what we should be doing in the hallway. We should be walking in the hallway. I want to see you walking in the hallway. And we would always tell them the why. Um, That's something she taught us too that I thought was really important. Sometimes as adults, uh, we don't feel like we need to provide a child with a why. It's because I said so. But many times, we want our children to be deep thinkers. We want our children to ask questions. We just don't want them to ask them of us, right? So if we are willing to put out that why, many times they start to understand, right? I really need you to use your walking feet in the hall because it keeps everyone safe. And if they're like, why? Then we go deeper, right? Because when you run, you might hurt someone else or, you know, you just go through all the options and then they start understanding why you're wanting them to do this and that really your intent is for their safety and their well-being. And so I always like to give them the why and I always like to teach them even if I have done it lots of times before. I read this awesome book and if you have not read it, I I encourage you to check it out. Um, it's by Dan St. Roman and it's Teach Skills and Break Habits. Now, uh, it's the growth mindset for better class behavior in the classroom. And basically what it is, is basically he is changing your mindset. He's not giving you a tool for the toolbox, another, you know, thing to hang on the wall or program to try. He is telling you, hey, You're going to teach these skills that they're missing and changing your mindset behind that. And what I found really interesting in this book was the first chapter is all about like why maybe our children are different than what we've seen in the past, the children that we have coming into our care. It's called Changing with the Times. And he gives some really solid reasons as to why we may be needing to step up our game on, um, the side of teaching things that we maybe traditionally didn't teach before those non-academic skills right those social skills and so this was a really really good read it's very easy read it's not um too in depth and he just he really breaks it down and he makes you think about you as an educator and how what you're doing can affect everything right And so going back to procedures, if we can teach them what we want to see, then most likely they're going to do it, right? 
And that is amazing because children aren't mind readers. Many times I remember back in my first grade classroom, like, why can they not figure out how to pick up this stuff? Well, I haven't one told them how to do it, showed them how to do it. They didn't even know I wanted them to do it because I hadn't said it. I was just committing a suicide. Like, hello, you get out a book, you put it away. Don't you? Like, doesn't everybody? Um, Unfortunately, no. And so if I want to see that, I have to expect it, model it, and set up kind of a system for it. So like the same would go true on um, students not running in the hallway, right? There, Once one starts running, you know, it's just like it becomes chaos and it's like, wow. But if you can go ahead and set that up, like this is what walking in the hallway looks like. This is what I want to see you doing. And then we practice it. Watch me. This is what it looks like. And you're just explicitly teaching it. Then you absolutely have no reason to go back and say, well, they didn't know because we're teaching it. And then just remembering the fact that, of course, they're always going to need retaught and retaught because research is telling us it takes 300 to 500 repetitions to really make things um, a habit. And what's worse is it takes like 3,000 to 5,000 repetitions of something to break a habit. So like my Diet Dr. Pepper habit is going to be very hard to break. If and if I would have just started and not drank it ever and just always went to water, and that would have been an easier thing for my brain to do, not having to break the habit. So we're the young, like we're the teachers of the little people. We can go ahead and start these habits so that when they get up in the older grades, they already have some of these things that we we are wanting them to do. So that's the very first reason why I think procedures and teaching them explicitly and over and over again is so important because we're going to have less chaos, right? We're going to have less behaviors. Why? Simply because they know what we want. They're not just guessing. And children figure us out real fast. They figure out how to push our buttons. And if they figure out that something pushes your button, they're going to keep doing it. But if you can go ahead and curtail that before and go, this is what I expect in this situation and pretty much all situations, right? I mean, we could teach a procedure for everything that we do. But I love it because it it really has made my children aware of what I want and they rise to meet that. So that's the number one reason. Second one is independence. Um, saying it over and over again is redundant, right? And it gets to you after, after, after a time. And so I've found that like with my backpack example at the beginning, my children have their backpacks out in the hallway and they were struggling to go get their backpack. I would say, go get your backpack. And it wasn't right in front of their face in the classroom, right? They had to leave the door as I was standing there monitoring them. They would have to leave the door. They would have to go get their backpack and they would have to bring it back in. But when they were in the classroom, they were like, just like, squirrel, 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 and no backpack. They couldn't see it. And so it wasn't happening. And so I was saying it over and over again, go get your backpack and then physically going, okay, move over here. See it, see it. And so when I put in place a let's go home, a way to go home, pack up your bags type of procedure, and I made it visual, oh my gosh, it was amazing. Because now they can go up and go, oh, go get my backpack. Where's my backpack? And then they'll go out. And then they can say, well, now I need to put in this. And I was so amazed at how many self-starters I had in my classroom that I didn't realize would be these little independent beings with this, just with the little simple tool, just with these simple cards that they could go by, almost like a checklist, right? And helped them go on down the down the road and figure out what to do. I was I was pretty amazed at um, which, like I kind of had an idea of which students would really gravitate toward, toward it, but I was kind of surprised as well. Like, okay. And then they became more independent, right? Maybe not everyone, <laughs> but most became very independent. And you know, They love to be independent. They don't want your help most of the time. And so this builds that self-esteem, that confidence and that pride that, look, I can do it by myself. I'm a big preschooler and I don't need your help, right? So that independence is very important. And then lastly, this one really kind of tugs at my heartstrings because especially now as we're looking at going back into the classrooms, things don't feel safe. 
they don't feel safe for any of us. Um, children may not know what that feeling is, but they could probably feel it in the air, right? That we don't know what's coming next. This isn't the norm type of feeling. Well, if we really put ourselves in children's shoes, that's how they feel every time they come to us in a preschool setting. Many times it's the first time they've left their mom and dad's caregivers, grandmas, grandpas. It's the first time they've done that. And so they feel that unsafety. They feel that I have never done this before and I don't know this person that you're leaving me with type of feeling. So those feelings we're going in with, with COVID is really kind of how they have felt all the time coming into our classrooms. It's scary. You know, if you ever have children asking you like, when's my mom coming? Or can we go outside and play? I'm hungry. When are we going to eat? All those things are concerning to them, right? They would be concerning to us. We like to know what's happening. We want our schedule done, right? We make our our daily schedule so we know what's happening. If we go to a conference, like we wanna know when is lunch break? What options do I have for lunch? Is there a map so I can figure out where I'm going? All these things are running through our minds. And while it may not be as magnified to children, they're still wondering like, when does this end? How do I know I can get through this? What do I need to do, right? And so procedure cards help with that because it gives them that routine. Every day we go through this list, every day. And every day it's gonna be the same. And then that starts creating that routine and they start feeling those comforts and they start feeling more confident. And just to mention on that too, visual schedule cards have been a game changer for me as well. We have our visual schedule up on the wall and I have some kiddos that want to turn them around when we're done with that. And they really get into that. And they're like, look, we do this, this, and then this. And then they can go to the procedures and go, okay, when I get ready to go home, I need to do this, this, and then this. And that feeling of safety, that feeling of routine and knowing what's coming next. Because like we know with Maslow, you got to Maslow before you bloom, they need to be able to feel safe before they can even be successful with us. So this is just yet another tool to help them feel safe and in control in a sense of their own day, right? And I have visual, uh, excuse me, I have visual schedule cards for free. Um, I can drop a link to them. And those are been just like super helpful, especially for, you know, especially for our kiddos that are already struggling leaving mom and dad. But I've been super surprised even at some of my children that I didn't think would like really grasp to that visual schedule. Oh my gosh, they just like need it. And if I don't put it in order before, they're trying to figure it out and do it for me. They just have that that same desire. Yeah, the same anxieties and fears we have, right? They have them too. And so I want my classroom to feel like a safe place. I don't want them to be scared to come or feel uneasy. I want them to know what to expect. And so procedure cards help that too, because they know what I expect. They aren't going, oh, is today the day I can get away with this? Nope, every day it's the same, right? Is today the day I can run in the hall and see if she'll get mad at me? No, because this is the procedure that we do every day and it doesn't change. So that consistency is huge. And so those are my big like whys, four of them. I'll just kind of review them a little bit. You're teaching what you wanna see, right? You're, you're saying, this is what I wanna see. And in turn, they can better meet you there because they know what you want, right? You're, they're not mind readers. Um, you're gonna have less behavior issues. If you teach them what you want and you don't just commit a suicide that they should already know this, you're just gonna have less behavior issues and your life's gonna be easier. And who doesn't want that, honestly? And then three, independence, creating that sense of, I did it myself, I can do this. This, you know, tools can help them walk right through that. And then also that feeling of safety, which is like, probably my number one because I want them to feel that when they come to school. I am their first teacher and I want them to feel like school is just this amazing, safe, wonderful place. Even if us as adults might be behind the curtain kind of freaking out about this place we're in right now, if we can project that routine and that safety onto our children, that's what we need to do. So 
those are my big whys. And I hope you can tell how passionate I am about teaching children, like basically everything. <laughs> it's um, a little bit exhausting, but I'm going to tell you by the end of the year, mid, not even the end, middle of the year, it is so worth it. The time that I took and how exhausted I was at the beginning of the year was so worth it because they're able to be more independent. I'm having less chaos, right? And they're happy because they feel safe. So tomorrow I want to share with you how I do this. Um, I came up with some procedure cards that I use for my classroom and um, how I put them together. And then on no, Thursday, sorry, I was trying to figure out what day it was. Thursday, I'm going to share with you some like tips and tricks and ways that you can use procedure cards in other ways um, if you have some needs in your classroom. So thank you so, so much for joining me. Yes, Doreen says, visual schedule cards have definitely been a game changer. Isn't it crazy? But if you really stop and think about it, it makes total sense. Like I want a schedule for a conference. I want to know what's going on. I want a schedule for like, a, we bug our directors, right? Where's our schedule? Where's our schedule? Um, when are we doing this so I can make my schedule? That type of thing. Which on that topic, um, next week I'll be doing um, a training on creating your ideal schedule. So hop in for that too. But yes, let me put a link to the visual schedule cards in the comments. And I'll also put a link into um, Dan St. Roman's book. So if you've got a little bit of extra time for maybe some light reading, it's really, really not bad. Even just the first chapter is absolutely game changing for your mindset. So I'll put that in there too. All uh, right. Oh, yes. Yes, I agree. They are a big help also with procedures when new kids come. Yeah. Yes, because then they can teach them and they can show them the cards. Beautiful. Anything that saves my brain space and energy is beautiful, isn't it, Dania? All right. Thank you guys so much for dropping in and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.